Let you take take the reins. We gotta find like. Bro, a shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Yo, 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 it's the Mallory Bros Podcast, episode 103, turn up, happy Friday, we had yes, to smack sir. into the weekend, you know, people don't like when you step on the opening like that, people do not like that, and y'all need to hit my man's DMs and tell him. Terrence wants to do we the thing when we point, and I but, hate it, but look, we, we don't about wanna, to get a new intro. We don't want to hear you say that, and if you're not coming with a new intro, and mm-hmm. we're doing the same so, thing we got the week. Then you need to shut your mouth. I'm going to come with a new intro. Niggas going to hate it like when Power tried to change for that one week. <laughs> or like when they hated when you said the whole damn nah. You still you still started What you mean greatness. they hated? They loved that. That's the reason why we have what we have today. You nah, hated the whole, it. You hated it. The whole it. damn nah was was whole was damn nah was what started this whole shebang. You look like a uh, shebang, boy. You look like a flashbang. Nigga got everybody blind in this joint. <laughs> Nigga look like a concussion grenade. <laughs> oh, my God. The fucking worst. Now they got that about drink. Game. Now they got that drink that you throw at the wall and it sparkle and kill you. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yo, hey, look, Terrell got the docket on lock today. I do not. You got the docket on lock. I do not have the docket on lock. Yes, you do. My man Terrell did his gritty, got on his grind, you know what I'm saying? Popped off on the weekend this and got a different docket for us. <laughs> so if like, y'all don't like the docket, then I like guess you, maybe. <laughs> this is what you like when your man says, my man about to drop 30 today. He dropping 30 today. You break the first three shots. Yep. Oh, now shit. you know what, Terrell? I know the first topic that we can start with. That way you don't got to start in your docket. Before, to before we get to that, how are you? How are you feeling, nigga? <laughs> oh, y'all see how you got that from me? Crazy if we put it in the mirror, he got that from C. Terrence, how do you feel? I feel straight. Good? All right, bet. I'm Next feeling top. pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm feeling pretty good. Y'all don't realize I snapped some shit up in the gym. Fucked my whole lower back up. I thought my stomach was fucked up, but it was my lower back. I don't know if anybody ever dealt with that. Yeah. Like, Where? Like, how about it, you know. Across the back? Yeah, and I'm, when stuff happens to you, you start thinking about certain shit. But for my people that might go to the gym, you will probably know, like, when you're in the gym all the time, you're normally going to be also in pain in some type of way all the time. I know I was trying. I was pushing myself the last three days that I was in the gym. I was pushing myself. Fucked my back up. So now I'm not in the gym. I wouldn't agree that you should be in pain some type of way all the time. Well, you know what I mean? Like your shit will be sore or, you're, or there's tightness. Like think about it. I'm not, I'm not in pain, but like my back was tight as shit. And I felt like, damn, I'm not about to go lift nothing on this. But I feel like, and I don't know about you, bro. As I'm always like, damn, what my arm feel? But okay, when you yeah. was trying to go hard in the gym. Mm-hmm. So other than that, bro, I'm feeling good. I'm on top of the world right now. Can't be stopped. That's good. I'm feeling all right. Thanks for asking. Oh, well, well, all right, bet. Y'all go look back at the podcast. When I asked you, sometimes you do forget to be like, how are you? Oh, what about, what about you? How are you? I mean, I feel, I feel like you'd be straight, you know? Yeah, I'm doing good. What was it? What happened this weekend? What happened this weekend? Memorial Day weekend. Memorial so we Day. Did we do anything? You did. You went and saw what? You went and saw some movie, didn't you? We went and seen fucking... My girl get these little T- T-Mobile deals, so we saw like this, the Bob's Burgers movie, random as shit. But it was actually cool. It was like a long ass episode of Bob's Burgers, random as fuck. We did it on Saturday though. Sunday, I went to a memorial. Yeah. Um, well, my best friend uh, lost somebody close to us, so I went to that, and and then we went to Mom's, I think, and that was it. We ain't do nothing on Memorial Day Monday. Yeah. Shit, I was trying to get some water, but. I wait. I got in the pool the week before, and so I really. We I guess we didn't really do nothing for Memorial Day weekend. But other than that, I'm straight. Had a good weekend, and the pool's open. The pool. Our is pool open. is open. I don't know if you seen. I it. rolled past that drink. Bro, he was getting in that jump. Yeah, that's life guards. Mm-hmm. We seeing 95 out here, y'all. 95 on the East Coast. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you something. If you want a, uh, if you want a uh, a solid cardio, yeah, swim some laps. Nah, no bullshit. Going back and forth. That'll humble you, yeah. We was in that pool. I was treading water, and I started realizing, damn, this shit, this shit like cardio for real. Yeah. Damn, this dude was, well, you know, I'm not even getting into that. <laughs> I saw this dude was talking about swimming. But um, I'm just trying to get to somebody, for real, to be honest, I'm trying to get to somebody's park, man. Amusement park. I'm trying to go to Magic Mountain. Nah, that's Mountain, next. That's next. To Texas. That's next. But y'all, y'all know Terrell fuck with roller coasters heavy. If you don't, 
This man loves roller coasters for real. Can coast- tell you about mad roller coasters. Coaster enthusiasts, yeah, man. It's like some, it's like one of my weird. It's like you know how some people be like really into Legos. Yeah. You go to the house, they got hella shit put together. It's like, yeah, just do this sometime or whatever. But yeah, I'll be sad. I'll be looking at that shit. Be, I'm trying to go somewhere. I feel I haven't been to the music park in forever. Fellas, y'all know how that is. When you into something and you scared to, you scared to tell the girl you really fuck with that you into it. You gotta ease her way in. You know what I'm saying? All oh, you anime niggas definitely have been through that. You always try shit on the anime niggas. But what if you a nigga, like you said, that does the Legos? What's the dude named uh Miles Turner? Play for the Pacers. He he did the big ass starship joint. He did the Titanic. He was like, these are my obsessions. You kind of got to ease a girl into some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But then again, me and Terrell was talking about that. Low key, I feel like chicks would see that and feel like that was that you, it's dope that you have your own thing. No matter what it is. If you're confident about it, it don't matter what it is. Unless lo- it's some weird shit. I'm about to say, unless it's not nothing that's weird, then I feel like... And when we say about weird, it's like it has to be like not suitable for work type weird. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. you could say that if you color every day, that's weird. Somebody could call you weird for that. It's like, whatever, that's what I do. Right, because what if you're a dog addict? That's what I'm saying. What if you're a beast? And this is what I do. That's the thing, too. When you're introducing what you love to somebody, if you really love it, you have to stand on that. Yeah. If you look like, yeah, you know, I like this, and you look like you're being ju- you look like you looking for the judgment, you'll yeah. get it. But that also comes from people that be judged. Like, you ever heard somebody say, I know you probably don't care, but I actually did this? That's because people before have displayed that they didn't give a fuck about what that person was saying. So now they try to preface their own feelings okay, by saying, yeah. If you somebody that does that, you got to look for that. You probably don't care, but I, I just did this. Why would yeah. I not care about that? Because people and I, in your life I'm, have told I'm you guilty of that. I'm not even going to lie. I'm guilty. Yep. I'll be, I'm, I'm somebody that's, if I'm rapping, I'll be like, you probably don't want to hear about, yep. you know? Mm-hmm. And I always get told to stop saying that. But yep. that's just how I am. Trauma. It, you be feeling guilty, yeah. That's <laughs> what somebody said. Can you shut the fuck up about this shit all the time? Can right. you please? Yep. Look, you 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 stressing because look, I just need somebody to listen to this. Watch, let me talk about my Legos, whatever you into. <laughs> you need to go and get that. And it is a time and a place because some people be trying to drown their girl. You try be trying to get your girl to do shit that, nah, for real. That you. But look, the first thing that I wanted to talk about on this joint today was, of course, something that me and Terrell deal with a lot. I know a lot of us might deal with it, but it's a part of adulting that we don't even really think about. And what that is is. Your parents get to a point where they literally become like your kids. And yep. for anybody who's listening to this, I want y'all to keep in mind, like, I'm sure anybody who might be over 25 with their parents in their life can probably kind of attest. You kind of watch your parents go from getting on you about shit yep. to you now being in the role where you're getting on them, whether it's about what they're doing. Think about it. When you get older mm-hmm. and your parents go out, what we say when they're leaving? Look. Where you going? Like, where well, you about to go? go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or from what they eat and their diet. I remember my mother used to be like, I know you're not about to eat that. And you haven't had dinner yet? Put it back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the mother we grew up with. Now, <laughs> I feel like I got to do it to her. Like, nah, hold on. Wait. Give me the ginger ale. Yeah, yeah. Give me the, <laughs> you know. So, I don't know if you want to speak on it, but like. Nah, for sure. I think uh, your parents start looking to you for that support. That they never looked to you before. Like, how to manage. Like, when I started working retail and I started working retail leadership. Yeah. And my dad retired and got him a little retail job. I always gave him the skinny on how management would work. Or if you got to go through HR, what you going to have to deal with. Shit like that. Yeah. So I kind of started helping him that way. But even with, like, money and shit. Like, your par- my parents are so modest and frugal that they'll be like, I ain't trying to spend $200. Yeah, like I'm not trying to spend. I'm not trying to spend two hundred dollars on that. It's like just get the one you want. I literally told my dad the other day, I'm gonna cash app you so you can get what you want, <laughs> like a kid. But honestly, your parents when they, they don't work, lose the yeah yeah. And honestly, I think it's dope because they don't be wanting to accept certain things from us, but they literally put in the groundwork to get you there, so that you can do that. Yeah. I can't wait to have kids and put in my groundwork so I don't have to do shit and then they can give me all they got. Yeah. And like as I got older, I started realizing that your parents get older, but they also get more sensitive to yeah. everything. I mean, like what you share, what you don't share. If you moved out of your parents' house and you haven't showed up, 
I'm letting y'all know, and I really wanted to get on here and say that, like, your parents are older now than they were when they were younger. Well, that sounds ridiculous. Sound like Sco- I like, sound like Scooter, right? Mm-hmm. Whatever dude's name. <laughs> They're older now than they were when they yeah. were younger. <laughs> Boomer. <laughs> Boomer. Yeah, Boomer. Boomer, that's his name. <laughs> but bottom line, it's like your parents definitely change. And when you get older, you kind of got to take in mind that your parents look at you, like you said, as an emotional crutch. If you don't got one of those parents that are like going out all the time, still hip, still move, on the move, and you know what I'm saying? Just pay attention to how your parents feel when you're around them. Yeah. Like, it, it is a lot. It, it's like, I used to underestimate that, you know, how much it means to your parents to, like, spend that real time and stuff like that with them. Yeah. But I think one thing that I really picked up is that my parents would be sensitive about not me not being there for them. The same way I would have if I was younger. You yeah. know? Same way that they needed to be there for me when I was young. When you get older, you'll see you got to be there for them. And some of y'all know your mom will call and be like, oh, my God, I just dropped everything everywhere. And it's like, <laughs> I'm in the middle of, <laughs> I need you to come over. Remember they called us? Uh-huh. It's uh, the biggest thing I ever seen in my life is in here. <laughs> you got to drop Not everything and go it. sometimes. The same way they had to do for you when your bad ass got your, your parents called at school. Oh my God! Nah, Miss Johnson, you gotta come and get him now. We want yeah, his we bad ass out of here. We gonna talk about that because <laughs> I have something to say about that that I think everybody can relate to. But before we move, before I move past that, I didn't want to say a lot of y'all are probably not there yet. If you're 19, That's why I 20, to you, yeah. and your parents are still high 40s, or see. in their 40s, when they start getting up of 50, 60, then you'll really start to see like, damn, I'm just like the grown up now, yeah, and they're like the grandma now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And now it's like. I got to figure shit out for them and me. So a lot of people are not there yet, but it's a good precursor. But what you just said brought back the biggest fear ever. Let me tell y'all something. When you got your parents called in school, specifically when you was in middle elementary, if, if somebody called my mother in high school, I didn't give a fuck. Yeah. Because if you was calling my mother, I was probably on bullshit. Right. And, you know, you just get to that age where whatever. But some people, some people get their ass whooped all the way up to 18. But... That fear you have when the teacher is talking on the phone and then the phone is being handed to you. That small, that couple of seconds before you take Here he is right here. Uh Uh-huh. He is right here. (laughs) And your teacher look at you like, now I got your ass. (laughs) (laughs) Let's see you explain what you was doing now. That fear you have when the phone is coming to you. Somebody need to record that and put it in slow-mo. Because I swear that fear is like... You start thinking about what I'm going to say. You trying to be cool because motherfuckers behind you in class see you and your parents call. Right. You don't want to cry like a bitch. And you was just jo- you was just on 10. Like, you was you was the man. You was joking until you got your parents called. And they don't pull. They didn't. You said, when we was young, it wasn't a pull you to the side and call your parents. It was literally stopping the whole the class. The whole class. And everybody sitting there watching you stand there while, while you talk to your mother. You ever see? You remember when the motherfucker be up there? <laughs> and you cry? They just cry. <laughs> <laughs> I did. She's lying. sitting up there looking dumb as shit. And you can't even get the she lying off in front of the whole class. You can't. You can't. That's parent-teacher conference shit. Low key though, I was thinking about that. If I'm a, when I'm a parent, let me talk to my son because low key, I have a better relationship with my son than you, and you know how I am. I'm not gonna, of course, push the adult away, but I'm like, yo, what's she talking about? I Terrence, know we not in that joint. But like they, they say, if your, your son is in your that joint, son picked up his lunch and poured it all on a on another do, another person, and you never seen your son do that. Let me just talk to him real quick. And then you get on the phone and your son say, "Well, I thought he was." Nah, fuck that. You know how you never you, do that. But you would know your son's mistakes. Is what I'm saying. But see, you're gonna also you're not thinking about this. And shout out to all my folks out here that have kids, um, because a lot of people that graduated before us. Have kids. Have kindergartners, first grade, second graders now. Yeah. The ones born in 2018, the 2019, gra- the 2017. One- yeah, the people that graduated 2011. Yeah. That class, they know they, they got like around them seven, eight, seven, eight year olds, well, six or younger if they didn't have kids. But um, what you're not thinking about is that when you get the call, you are embarrassed as a parent. Nah, for sure. That's why I'm like, nah. He You're going to be embarrassed. So it's going to be like, when you get on the phone, it's like, uh, uh, yeah, I- I'm so sorry. I guess I'll talk to him. You're, you're going to be embarrassed because there's a parent. There's another nah, adult. Nah, fuck that. I'm not immediately embarrassed. There's another though. somebody your age 
calling you, telling you that your kid that you raised, that's supposed to be for you, is fucking up. It's almost like, Tash, you work retail. When your team was fucking up and your boss came and said, your team is on some bullshit. Terrell, but you see me and you was different leaders. Because look, you would immediately say, okay, boss, okay. And then look, you're going to go you back really pissed. Fucked up. <laughs> right? I used to be like, all right, all right, bet. But then I was also the nigga that'd be like, okay, but like I work with them and I understand what and they that's do. why your ass never had control. But this is my thing. When you have a kid, let's say, let somebody get to talking spicy about your kid on the phone saying he did this and that. I'm not automatically going to be embarrassed. I'm going to be like, hold on, wait, let me talk to him and see if like this add up before I immediately come at him. That's what that's going to be a bad thing though, because my son will be like, call him, yeah. call that nigga. I will talk to him, Dad. Now yep. you know. P oh, please call my dad. Don't call my mom. Please call my dad. That's what I'm gonna say. Call. You know what? The teachers get call away for that. his mother. Cause I'm busy right now. <laughs> I'm sitting right next to her. Look. Oh my god. <laughs> Do the mouse. And you know what, Brody? You're not going to be cool. You're not going to be awesome, whatever. If somebody called you and said your son just dumped, uh, your son dumped his spaghetti on this little girl in class, ruin her day, ruin her favorite shirt. Let me talk to him. What the fuck is your problem? Why are you in that joint acting Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. Dad, you don't even know what I did. First of all, I've seen you drop the spaghetti at this home, and I told you about that bullshit, and now you're doing it in school. Because people act like they kids do shit in school that they never seen. Nah. You're the black ass like, knows that your kid is capable of doing this. You're going to be just like the father from Roscoe Jenkins' family reunion. Now drop your britches and bend them. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be just like James Earl Jones, your non-listening ass. Immediately off the, off the pop-off, what the fuck are you nah, doing? Nah, I probably wouldn't do that. I would probably, I'd probably be, say some slick shit like, yo, you know what I was just doing right now? What I was just doing before I got this call? Man, I was just watching my favorite whatever. I used to do that shit to my employees. You would say it to your son? Yeah, I would do that. I would want 100%. I'd be like, you know what I was just doing? I was just having the best day ever. And then my phone rang and got this call, and they said, you doing what? Now, I'm going to be a different parent than you because we on, me and my son are on a team. See, you're going to be. I need to talk to my son before, you, before I'm immediately on some he, he did what? I'm going to be like, what? That don't even sound like my son. Let me talk to him. Alone, though. I yeah. don't need you here. Let me holler at him real quick. And Once I gonna, get the info, I don't, he know I'm not going to play with him, but I'm also not about to show him that I'm against him. I would always show him that I would be the one. Think about how if, if everybody was reading him wrong and they call me and now I'm reading him wrong, it's like, yo, I'm, I'm going to talk to you first. Then it's going to be like, okay, so that damn, they all right. So, like, I don't know why the fuck, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> then I'm going to get into that. But, like, bro, you can't be immediate. Look, we talking like we got kids. We ain't got kids. But I don't think you could be immediate. Man, if your kid pulls some spaghetti on a little girl and ruin her day, to me, I'm going to be pissed. Because why do you think that's acceptable? You're right. You're right. You're, you're, I'm, it's unacceptable. But you are right about how if something happens where your son is a little what misunderstood. What if she poured milk in his pants and he reacted and poured his stuff on her? I don't think that, you know what I'm saying? This mean my son just randomly acted out and hurt somebody. I'm going to be like, oh, okay, but did y'all not focus on the part where he said she poured on him? Because I'm going to handle this. But I need y'all handle that so this don't happen again. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not and that's what you, you know? but you know what? No, nah, that's different. That does make it different. You are right. Like that I'm conversation out, is yeah. important. But you're going to your ass is going to be embarrassed that you get in a call or about your, or your, your kids. But they're not going to tell us probably is your kids don't lie like shit. Kids be lying. lying. They do. She she did this to me, so I did that. And that's not going to be the. If, but I think look, wouldn't you know if your your kid be lying like shit? My best friend's kid, my goddaughter. Yeah. Uh. She said, she'd be lying like shit. She'll be like, such and such punched me. And I'll be like, no, she didn't. She said, it's a fine line. She said, because I know she, I know when she's telling me the truth. That's it. And I know when she's just on bullshit. Yeah. Because she said, she come back and tell me everything that happened. But sometimes I'll be like, you want to go see such and such? And she'll be like, she pushed me. And it's like, she did? And it's like, no. Okay, you lying. So oh, she yeah. can could, could kind of read it. But you'll be able to read with your kid. That's what I'm thinking. And you know what? We're talking about the ladies today. I'm not even going to say your girl, your girl, you got to treat your girl like a kid, but Don't I was do thinking that. about this. If you better raise hella eyebrows. <laughs> nah, I'm not. But I mean, like, you kind of got to be like that wall. And I was talking about that, like being a wall for your girl and not being a mirror. 
And I was saying, like, you'll have your girl will come up to you and say, you know what I'm saying? You're not even fucking listening to me when I'm talking. I've been talking to you this whole fucking time. You're not listening. Right? What you got to be in that situation is a wall instead of a mirror. And that's what I literally have to teach myself. Because if I'm a mirror, that means I'm going to say, what the fuck are you talking about? Did you not just hear me listen to everything you said? You know what I'm saying? Do you but, see but, my energy, though? But talking to a wall is like talking to nothing. No, nah, I said be a wall. And I don't you ever mean see the meme of the nigga talking to the brick. Yeah, wall? but I don't mean that wall. I mean more like a wall of defense. Think about it. If you go to a tennis wall and you hit the ball up against the wall, this wall don't change. The ball is gonna come off the wall different, but I know this wall is solid and it ain't about to fall. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Or when we tie a rope around a tree and I'ma hang like this and go down, it's the same thing. You gotta be the tree. You can't be the rope. Cause guess what? The rope will break. And you can't be that. And I've been finding myself being the rope or a mirror. Somebody come at me spicy. And look, fellas, this is going to be our lifetime fight. Somebody come at you spicy. And I don't know if T. Terrell is in a great relationship a, and knows what he's ho, doing. Hold on, hold up. Fuck out no, of no, here. No, 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 no. Nobody's saying that. I'm saying your situation doesn't come with some of the other Tans, things. Yes, it do. Some of our other ones, they put an extra one in our bag. You, uh, so you don't think I aid in my situation not being toxic? No, 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 no. I'm just saying. Because you always try to say deal your with, situation, you're not dealing with. Nah, I would deal with some of the bullshit that you niggas deal with. But look, you know what's fucked up, though? But I've done it before. And I'm but when I'm sitting no here, when I sit here and I pour myself out to this nigga and I say, yo, I'm dealing with this. He'll tell me he doesn't deal with that. That's the only reason why I Man, say that. That is not true. I'll oh, I don't really deal with that. I don't deal with that no more, but I've been there. Everywhere you've been, I've been twice. But that's what I'm saying. So why we can't have a convo? Because you was getting ready to disrespect me. Because say, I felt like when you, I bring, I, if I put, look, if I put a minute, he going to say, oh, I, ain't, I ain't dealing with that. I'm, I'm good. All right, you know what? My, go ahead. Because that's why I'm saying. I don't know if you're go this way. Here. All right, well, you, <laughs> you say if you this way. I know that I can be a mirror sometimes. And as a man, I accept that as a flaw. Meaning I'm slowly but surely trying to shed that back. Meaning, like I just said, you don't listen to me. I'll be sitting there feeling so, like, how the fuck could she say I don't listen to her? And I listened yesterday, the day before, the day before that. Let me remind her just how I've been fucking listening and see the response. Not a good response. Yeah. But look, it's so, when you really were listening, it's so automatic sometimes because you could be used to defending yourself in your work. You could mm -hmm. be used to defending yourself in any other way. Yeah. So when your woman come at you, it's almost like this. And the reason why I brought up a kid, if you was busy, right, and your kid brings you raw emotion, like raw whatever, whether it's her being sad about some shit, whether if she was real happy about some shit or scared and it threw you off. Let's say y'all watching the game and your daughter running with her iPad like, Daddy, Daddy, look at this. Right when something happened and you look there and then you miss this. And that kind of makes you, you can't say, hey, you've seen parents make that mistake. Mm. Hey, we ain't here watching this game. Take that in. Yeah. Now your daughter's like, oh, shit, I fucked up trying to love you or trying to show love. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with your girl. When your girl popping off at you low-key, you got to ask yourself if it's about, if this her coming at you with some, on some love shit, like she fuck with you, or if she really on some dissing you shit. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, y'all, it's love. It's love. It is. And that's why I say, all right, bet. I'm going to just be more of a wall. Like, oh, all right, bet. Like, damn, that's how you feel? Man, like, I'm not even nah, that's true. on that. If you, get any, get, you find yourself having that volley, you did this. No, uh, well, you know what? I only did that because you don't want your motherfucking ass want to. That's, yeah, the, that's, the that's the most terrible way people argue. Because, look, if you're not listening when your girl talking and she's saying, you're not listening to me, you never listen to me, she don't mean you never listen. She might have just said that because of the moment. You know what right. I'm saying? But as opposed to realizing that your black ass is not listening. Terrell, but I'm not going to sit here and act like that's but, easy, bro. No, nah, but this is what people do, and this is the mistake that people make. People want to now say all the other times that they was listening, which is mm -hmm. cool. You was listening to them other times. It don't change the fact that you wasn't listening now, though. Right. And so, you know how you see, you see it on Twitter every day. Somebody will say some shit, be wrong about it, and say, well, still, I don't give a fuck. It's because they don't want to admit and just say, oh, damn, I was actually wrong on this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They'll just find another point to try and make. 
And that's specifically dangerous in your relationship because you're going to continue to have that same approach to everything. Yeah. What you just said about the kid shit, though, or you go ahead. Nah, but I was going to ask you just to counter off that. Do you believe in happy wife, happy life? To a certain extent. To a certain extent. I believe in that tenfold. I'm 100% behind I that. I think I happy- talked to your father about that this morning. <laughs> <laughs> 40 years <laughs> <laughs> but nah he you know what i'm saying i feel like bro if you're gonna be happy if you're gonna be happy then it, then you have to believe in happy wife happy life because there's no way you're gonna be happy with an unhappy wife damn that shit like that shit sound like i'm i'm spitting about this cake i got an unhappy slice terrence please don't start the cringe raps you know how mcdonald's had the uh crunch rap cringe rap you look like a crunch wrap. You look like you definitely used to go get a crunch wrap and used to get the chicken select. Okay, but you look like you get a McMuffin. Nobody gets McMuffins. This nigga look smooth like a he McGriddle. Hard ass, uh, uh, what they call them things? This nigga look like a McMuffin. How you look like a McMuffin? I just said bus. that. They was trash. The McMuffins was no, terrible. No, 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 you tripping. Because the McMuffin that, was fire. The English muffin would get hard. And now you just got egg and something else in it. it nah, trash. you know what I fucked McGriddle with? McGriddle life. Sausage, egg, and cheese biscuit. McGriddle. Woo! First of biscuit, all, the biscuit. Talk, nothing at McDonald's was better than a steak, egg, and cheese bagel. Let's talk about it. You eat that, that John, and you might as well just go home. That's a full <laughs> breakfast meal. Yeah, that's that's a crazy meal. It was something about the way you bit the bagel, though. The it b- would break. Bagel, egg, sausage, cheese, Ooh. grease. That motherfucker drip. <laughs> I'm telling you, that joint was fire. But you know what? There's nothing better than that chicken biscuit from Chick Fil A. Let's stand up and talk about it. That joint is fire. How about we stand up and talk Man, about it? Man, I used to get two of them joints. Them was, bitches bust. But did you put did you put jelly on yours? Bro, yes, the strawberry jam. Yeah. I just need one pack of strawberry jam, man. One pack of strawberry jam. Berry, berry, berry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, but back we was talking about. Happy Bro. wife, happy life. Only reason why I say happy wife, happy life is because, as fellas, as a man, I promise you, you're going to have to be cool with your girl being 1,000% wrong and you just say, fuck it, and we just about to move the Nah, for real. She's never going to really see what she did. Your girl could knock your whole Lego set on. You've been working on it for 300. You've been working 400 pieces. She knocked the whole Lego set off. Fuck up every piece. But she going to say, I was bringing you your food. How did I know it was right there? And you were like, do you have any idea? <laughs> Save it, bro. Nah, <laughs> you can be upset, but you can't hold on to that shit too long. Well, yeah. Now you're going to have to apologize for you getting got, upset as upset as you, you did. You got 10 hours. You don't get a day. Because we got 10 hours. <laughs> right. People act like women aren't. People act like your girl's not going to be super upset about that. She just ruined that for you. Nah, facts. And she don't want to harp on that. Right. You know, she don't want to be that wrong for that long. She don't want to be yeah. wrong for too long. But she is going to feel like shit. Yeah. You just can't make this the end of the world because especially some of you imperfect niggas that have done mm-hmm. shit and been forgiven. Now you need to have to forgive it. You need to be forgiven a little bit quicker. And I ain't going to lie. When you get shit on, it's, it's hard, fellas. When you get slammed for some shit that you do, it could cause you to be one. Now you want to get your shit off when your girl wrong, but this is where you're going to fuck up. Your girl slammed you because you did some, some shit, right? She'll slam you as a man. Wall, right? We're not mirrors. But when she do something, you be so I don't like, like the wall thing. Walls are the worst uh, to talk to. I only, well, it's, see, you thinking about it like that. And I'm not making an analogy for you. I'm talking about me. You don't have to like it. Look, because straight up, we can end this interview right here. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you see the nigga step away from the mic? No, because I'm not dealing with this bullshit. <laughs> but bottom line, but I get what you're saying, though. Oh, but look. When she do some shit, I feel like you'll be so like, oh, all right, bet. Now she fucked up. I'm not letting it slide. You got to let that shit not slide, but. And most of the time, your, her fuck up ain't on your fuck up's level for you to yeah. be as mad as she was. And then I'll, I'll, I can admit to making mistakes of, of shitting on, not shitting on somebody for fucking up. But like, if I fucked up, I'm definitely pressed to let somebody know they fucked up. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just, I just. You have to learn to let that go if you're going to be on some real man time. It's about taking the L. I always tell people, if shorty making you better, if she making you a better dude, if the mistake that that, that, or that person made don't impact that or change that, yep. then I feel like, you know what I'm saying? It, you got asked the question, like, are you on, am I on man time 
Or am I being a high schooler? Yeah. Like, I'm out. you got to really be on man time. There's times where it's little shit that could come up in your relationship where you're wrong. That could be a big-ass argument. Or you could just be on man time and admit, yo, I fucked this up. Yeah. But I'm not going to do that no more. Me and my girl have argued about some stuff. Not really, nothing crazy. My girl, me and my girl, biggest arguments are about shit that we disagree on. It could be we talking about some pop culture shit or some p- political bullshit where it's nothing to do with the relationship. It's something else. Yeah. And we just going back and forth because she making her point, I'm making my point. That's different. But when it comes to stuff with the relationship, you got to be on man time. Yeah. Your girl tell you some shit, it don't matter what you was going through or what you done been through before. You got to look at the situation for what it is right here. And your girl want to be able to come to you with any type of emotion and you not break. And that's what I'm learning. Once you break, your girl will feel like, I can't come to you with my emotions because you're going to break. I can't trust that I wrap this rope around this tree and it's going to stay sturdy. If I feel the, that it's about, your girl can feel that. And guess what? She's going to stop tying a rope around you. Now, let me ask you this. At what point does, the, does as men, at what point do you also, that's a good question. At what point do you get to swing? Or, what or do you have to be the tree for yourself? Because That's I feel I, like <clears throat> in a lot of situations, speaking for the fellas now, yeah. because you're right, we got to be men, we got to be the one to whatever, but you also have to be in a situation with a woman that's going to listen to how you feel. Yeah. That's not going to hear how you're feeling, and now she heard something she don't want, and so now she don't want to listen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And y'all have to create that, that energy together. If I feel a type of way and I need to tell my girl, her ass will sit there and listen. And sometimes I'll be like, I know I'm rapping. And she'll be like, you good. Yeah. But if she wasn't that type of person, I don't know if we'd be together. Because I also need somebody that's going to listen to me. Yeah. I know my role as a man. But I also know that I need somebody that's also going to need to listen to how I feel. And I think a lot of men put that to the side, trying to be this man. Mm-hmm. And now you're ready to kill yourself. You know what I'm saying? Because you done bottled all this emotion up because you can't give it to her. You don't really have, look, let's say you don't have many friends. Yeah. You just literally bottling emotion and just trying to, you, you, you trying to be out for her. And that's why a lot of niggas that might hear this, if you, if you a man and you hear the first part of this conversation and you feel like, yeah, but I'm doing that. But what about me? What about me? Okay, you got bottled emotion that you need to get out. Yeah. And because like, that's how they receiving it. What I'll say too, bro, is... You know me. I wear my heart on my sleeve. That's just what it is. If I feel a way that I'm speaking out on it, I'm not the type to hold it in. So I'm not going to sit here and I can act like, oh, yeah, they just got to do this and do that. I'm not going to sit here and act like I know. But what I will say is if all I can say, if, if this person making me a better, if I know when I look in the mirror that this person makes me a better man or this person I feel like is improving me, I was just talking to my boy Jeremy about that. It's like, there's going to be people in your life that seem so negative after a while. You're going to, like, history is a big thing for mm-hmm. a lot of men. Me and this girl got a lot of history, and I just don't want to throw that away, but I don't feel like I'm, I'm her. You know what I'm saying? Well, I don't feel like I'm getting what I really want. I mean, these are absolute, like, necessary, and there's nothing wrong with those feelings. Like, you totally, it's totally something that's going to happen on both sides. And... The difference between us and women is there. I feel like they're vocal about it, For and sure. we'll and like you said, we'll we'll bottle it in. Me, if y'all can take any advice from me, if I feel any type of way, I'm willing to be wrong about how I feel to know that we good. Man, you know what I'm saying? Whoever I'm fucking with, meaning I'll say, hey, like, I just feel like I don't know if I, you know what I'm saying? I'm the type to come with you exactly what how I feel, and then if I'm wrong, bet. I just wanted to make sure I'm not out here looking stupid. Yeah, for sure. And I ain't going to lie. I've been with some people who might not have handled it that well because it's going to look like I'm accusing. or Yep. And, I, and some people juggle with sharing stuff like that because you don't want to look too emotional for a woman. You don't want to look like I'm, I'm, I'm always worried about something. But to me, yeah. it's, I was making a mistake where when I would share how I felt and get the negative, I don't know why the fuck you even thought that type of response that's when my rope would break. Or, or that's when, you know, because I'm like, oh, so you don't understand how I would think that? You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. You don't understand what you're doing? And it's like, that's Composure what, is, is important. 
do not snap. It's like my thing is if you share how you feel and you still going to stay as yourself, it's not that you're going to know that this girl is for you, but sharing is going to let you know exactly, all right, bet, I'm sharing. She's not listening. I'm going to just go ahead and move on to something else. What you smiling and looking at? This nigga is growing. Nah, Y'all 100. don't know how toxic. 100. Y'all don't know. It's, it's, it's good to see you grow, bro. Nah, Honestly, in real like, time. Y'all don't know how toxic Terrence is and living with this man is sometimes exhausting. That's why I want to get my own floor. <laughs> <laughs> because it's just so, sometimes it's like, I don't understand how he can deal with so much shit. But in this, and then some of the decisions he's made, he's getting better. He's becoming a better man for a woman. You know what I'm saying? Because he used to be toxic. I was horrible four weeks ago. <laughs> and then what I was saying, toxic. bro, life too short for the high school shit. When I turned 28, y'all, but I ain't going to lie, I had a, it seemed like a nigga shook me and smacked this shit out of me and was like, yo, you nigga, you getting older. Uh huh. So... A lot of the, like, I'm looking at myself as a man in the mirror now and not like a growing man. Like, okay, let's say that you are a man. Because right now, believe it, at 21, you a man. Yeah. But you always going to be looking at yourself like, you know, I'm young. I'm still you know? young, yep. Nah. I'm looking at this shit like, nigga, Motherfucking you'll be felt 50. <laughs> and all of these, all these fingers that, I, that you got pointed out like this, there's not going to be anybody on the other end of it. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It's just going to be me. You couldn't figure nothing out? Yeah. You couldn't. It was always them. It was never you. Yeah. Yes. I know niggas that's 40 dating, 45 dating. I used to work with niggas that's 38 dating. And it's like, y'all, you work hard. You got the money. You got, y'all getting paid crazy. But you have nobody really to share it with. Right. And even some of the people that knew that they were they like, they would tell me. You need to find somebody. My old mentor used to tell me, I want you to be like me and be 38 and still trying to figure it out with these ladies. Find you somebody solid. Make that happen the right way, though. Yeah. And honestly, that's what my, that would be my advice to everybody. Because like you said, everybody, and me and my girl were talking about settling. settling. Yeah. And, and she was like, I would never want somebody to like settle for me. And nobody wants that, mm -mm. right? And I was like, True, but for me, it's not necessarily like a settle. I didn't settle for my girl. You know what I'm saying? She's everything that I wanted. Yeah. But there's going to be something about the person that you deal with that you don't, that, that you may you not like or you will want to be different. Mm -hmm. There's going to be things about you that whoever you deal with, they're going to wish that little thing was different. 100. But I did it for eight years. Um. You're going to look for this perfect person that looks the way you want, act the way you want, into the things you want them to be into, thinks the way you want them to think. Eats the same shit as you, it's sleeps so the same your, way that as you. The perfect person is not out there. Mm -mm. And what a lot of people do is they fuck over the best thing that ever happened to them because they're looking for this image of this perfect thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like if, if she check off eight of them, ten, of them ten boxes, nigga, you hit the jackpot. That is the jackpot. That's a fact. Because, as and, and trust me, the niggas out here, you can see it. The dating pool, and you could probably attest, it ain't much substance out there. There's so much material shit yeah. that it ain't much substance. And then the, what the, the crazy thing about the dating pool, I would say, is how... And that's for men and women. And it's for men and women. To mm -hmm. me, the craziest thing about it is like the... the um, and look at me getting kind of like... I don't know. I can't even, ex it's hard to even explain, but it's just like, it don't seem like everybody is as open about who they are up front. You got a lot of people that will show you, it's almost like you're meeting people's Instagram page in real life. And you got to spend time with somebody mm -hmm. for real to start unlocking the layers of who they really are. And a lot of times, both on men and women, people put on the front, the, the, the fake because we got so much out there to be like. I told yep. Terrell, all content creation these days, it seems like it's remakes. From Instagram Reels to TikToks. Yep. We're seeing viral videos go viral again because another person in a different area did the same thing. You know what I'm yep. saying? Like, it's crazy. But 
it's hard to get a real idea about who somebody really is without spending time. So some people will not like the persona you're showing, not give you no time of day. Mm -hmm. You get to know somebody, and then they seem different than who they really was, mm -hmm. and then y'all kind of fall off. I don't know. It feels like, I don't know. I don't know if it's because we're getting older. Not for real. people being more safe. But you said some real shit, what you said about this Instagram. People walking, they're like, just like meeting somebody's Instagram profile in real life because everybody's trying to be something. And you know what? It's kind of like that on both sides. A lot of these women that I've seen online dealing with these niggas and they DMs trying to fuck real quick saying, so you're going to let me fuck or so do you like it in... What, what's your favorite position? It's crazy yeah, that they got to deal with that. At the same time with men, on the other hand, our perception of what we think women want is so skewed. Like when I met my girl, let's say that a couple of the women that I dated before I got with my girl, right? Yeah. It was all about, I felt like who I was and what I had and made more sense than it made. It was more important than who I really was. I you can take you saying. to this restaurant and spend four hundred dollars. Yeah, and then you get a nice whip, and I take you back to a nice crib type shit. When I met my girl, she didn't even look at my car. She just mm -hmm. got in that joint and was like, "Oh, whatever." But let me tell you, women I took out before was like, "Oh my god, this car, this is so nice." This, look at the. My girl got in, shut the door, and didn't say shit. Didn't give a fuck what I had on. Brand new. I have just got my Yeezys, whatever. She didn't give a fuck. Doesn't care about none of that shit. I could, I could literally get a brand new <laughs> Maybach Benz that's the same color as my car, but completely different. Pull up and pick up my girl, she just get in. And I don't know if it's because we both kind of goldfish brained in the head, <laughs> <laughs> but she don't give a fuck about that. Yeah. But in that, what's more, what the most important thing to her is like who I am as a person, how I am in a relationship, the yeah. shit that I say. And that's how you got to kind of B, but it's tough because a lot of these women out here are like, what can you buy me? Yeah. That is a real thing. That's not all women, but there's a lot of women out there that's like, what can you get me? What can he get me? Because think about it. You get online and you see the chick that says, I just love my boyfriend. Look at this text thread. Look, bae, I need my nails done. He sends her a fucking $1,000. He sends her $1,000. <laughs> Look, you work your two-week job and your two-week check is $1,200. You think, I could never give a, a shorty $1,000 and not pay my bills. Right. But you're not a broke nigga because of that. Right. That is a common misconception. And that don't sound like Shawty is happy that she got somebody that love her. She sound like she happy that she got somebody that's going to supply something for her or exactly. give her something. So people fall for that. A lot of fellas fall for that illusion. Yeah. Like, damn, I'm, I'm really not. I, I don't got it like that. I remember when my check was, it was $1,600, I was making... Like, dollar an hour, I was making what some would consider good money. Yeah. I, I mean, give it up. I'm trying to, re I don't remember what that number really is, but when I was making like $24, $25 an hour, Your that was, was good like, money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But compared to these niggas on Instagram, I was not, I mean, on Twitter, I was nothing. I wasn't even ready because my two week check being $1,600, $1,700, if I'm gonna give you a thousand, I, can I got give you bills to pay. I gotta eat for the next two weeks. Lo student loan. Right. So, don't fall for the, the facade. Yeah. Because there's some real shit still left out there, but that's what people got to deal with. And I know you got on your list chivalry, right? You want to talk about that? Yeah. And some you know chival what's crazy? Some chivalry reminders. Yeah. And I think we should get into that because low key, I think it's important that we talk to the fellas about like ways you can like impress your girl or do things for your girl that don't necessarily, that it doesn't equate to the $1,000 for nails. Oh, yeah. You don't have to, you know what I'm saying? For right. my people that's getting that eight hundred dollar check every two weeks, we come from that life. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying. Me and Terrell been dating. <laughs> We've been dating. <laughs> Me and Terrell been dating around, even doing mm -hmm. that. But we always been the same dudes. Like, you could, you know what I'm saying. I don't know if you wanted to start on any angle with that. Nah, you, know? you good because it's something that you can always do from your level. You go ahead. I, I, these are. This is more so how you should act with somebody. This ain't really about courting. Oh, okay, yeah. But go ahead. And that's kind of what I'm getting on. Yeah, you in like, a sweet spot. Yeah, because we like. I think if your girl wants to be, what are we, what, I forget what we were talking about, not spoiled, but your girl, girls say, I want to be spoiled. I want a man that'll spoil me. And, and I think we get this idea that you got to spend a whole bunch of money. And you really don't have to spend, I mean, you're going to have to spend something. 
but it's not like big money. I mean, like girls want to be spoiled like a dude that always give her flowers, yeah. right? Let's say you make that your thing. Or when you go to 7-Eleven, you get her something that she like. You that don't cost you nothing but five dollars, but it just true. you're spoiling her by showing her like I got you on my mind when you're not around. You know what I'm saying? And I'm telling you, we will lose. You can lose that. Yeah, that it's the small shit that add up. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not a nigga that's just speaking on a podcast. We do this shit. Feel yeah. me? Vouch mm-hmm. for me, real? Nah, for real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he, he right. <laughs> we do the small shit, like. Me and Terrell, that's one of the best things about, I think, me and him as men is we take pride in doing the small shit. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, I, I pick up a lot of game from Terrell that he don't even tell me. Just watching him with his girl, it's like, oh, I bet. Like, that little thing, yep. I'm taking that, and I'm running with it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let's say your girl graduate from, from uh, college. A lot of y'all gra- girls graduating from high school. Tell your girl, yo, I want to take you out or to celebrate. Mm-hmm. Or let's go on a smaller level. Let's say you buy your girl. Let's stay with the graduation because. Because I'm staying on graduation. Okay. I'm just saying, don't yeah. have to be take you. Let me take you out. You know, because right. it's like, damn, now I got to get a car. Now I got to find a ride and all of that. I'm just For saying. For the young niggas, yeah. Yeah, but it's like more like, you know, your girl, some of y'all women graduate and it's just a congratulations, bae. Y'all show up to the, to the graduation empty handed. Empty handed at the graduation? Yeah, that's not it. Come on. Roses cost how much, Terrell? You can get some roses for seven dollars at the giant. It's it's nothing. You at don't the have giant, to get seven dollars yeah. at the giant. And if you really want to get what I do now is I'm a little bit of a I'm a little bit of a try to do a lot nigga. So I'll get two dozen of something. So I'll spend twelve on a dozen of this and then get the nineteen ninety nine roses and then I'll go home, pop the band off and mix that shit up myself and then redo it myself. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm just an extra nigga, but them six roses or seven roses you can get or the, the flower suit you can get for $7 will make your whole shit 10 times better. Shit easy, man. Your girl graduate, go to the party city. They got a whole section in there for new graduate. You can mm-hmm. get your girl a balloon that says, I graduated. Your girl going to want to take pictures on graduation day. She should have, you know... Fellas, we're not talking about nothing that costs you know mad what? money. And you know what? I think I want to clarify something real quick while we're talking about this because the word simp will come up when we're talking about real man shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And young niggas use that word, and I want to clarify like the meaning. Simping is when you don't have a chick and you going against the common thing of a, of men, you going against the common theme that men are discussing to try and pander to a woman. That's right. completely different. That's completely different. Example. Then, example. We all talking about how, let's say we all have an account, we have an accountability conversation about how women don't take accountability. Ladies, that's a conversation. <laughs> you may take accountability, but as a collective, it's always a woman, woman, woman. So let's say all men are talking about that. Or, or barbershop talk. We in there talking talk about what with, our women put us through. Right. Yeah. On the TL, though. Here you come saying, well, maybe she, maybe you should. Women, well, oh, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, damn, he's simping like, he's a, you're a simp. Because we know you know women are watching. And we, look, it's the, like, she's not going to let you hit, bro. It's, it's Cuba Gooding Jr., Boys in the Hood. How about we let these ladies eat first? <laughs> I always thought that was some lame ass shit. And look, we fucked with Doughboy. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry, bitch. Well, look, we fucked with that. <laughs> toxic shit. But he was with it. But that, but, nah, that but to you know me what, was Terrence? an example of simping. I wouldn't call that simping, though, because that's you, some... No, Terrence, that's he, man shit. Look at the scene. Let the again. ladies eat. Look that's at the scene man first. Shit. Go look back at the scene. He looked and saw the women. But that's man shit. Simping... You got a girl, nigga. Terrence, simping is when the girl is wrong and the man is trying to say, yeah, go, yeah, you right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, nigga, you, okay, you just yeah, doing this because you. you think she going to let you hit, but you really a sellout type shit. That's what I'm talking I feel about. That. You're right. You're right. The Cuba Gooden Jr. nigga was the only one on man time. The rest okay. of them niggas wasn't. You know what I'm saying? They pushed the ladies out the way to get to the plate. How about we let... But look, my thing that I didn't fuck with about it is how he wasn't automatically on that. 
Yeah, he kind of pissed. He was pussy. up there with the plate already. And <laughs> guess who was the only one in the movie that got pussy? Trey. Trey. From Nia. Cuba Gooden Jr., the Shout one we're talking about. Shout out to Ime Udoka. Right. <laughs> Boston Celtics. You will get to that we'll shit. We'll get to that. But anyway, uh, what we were talking about, um, you were talking about simping. I just wanted to clarify that because you yeah. were talking about some real man shit, and, like how you got to do more. Like we talked about the graduation shit. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, and he's 100% right, y'all. If you got a girl... You should 100% be a simp for your girl, right? Like, I'm the biggest simp. I'm, I'm a, the worst. You have to be a simp for yeah. whoever you fucking with. There's no way you can fuck with a girl for real, for real, and not simp. Not for real. Like, it's got to jive like, you know what I'm saying? And you know what? All of the material shit is cool, but love is spelled T-I-M-E. Nipsey. And uh, Nipsey did say that. And you know what? He people, was the first person I saw say that, but I know it's... He saw and, somebody say that. And you know, a lot of people, when they say that, they're talking about your kids. Because they said you can love your kids, whatever, but all they really want is to spend time with you. Yeah. Same kind of thing with your girl. Like, a lot of people, like my boy, shout out to my boy, Amonique. He, he got his shit together, so I'm going to talk about this. Um, but we was having a conversation one night outside the, uh, the Cadillac Ranch, and he was like, we were talking about, my boy Steve was like, yeah, I'm about to take my girl to, uh, we going to this, uh, this, you ever been to this hookah lounge, whatever? I was like, nah, we just went to this place for my girl's birthday call, whatever. And he was like, damn, you know, I haven't taken my girl out in a minute. I need to do something. <laughs> and we was like, my boy Steve in a relationship for five years. Mm -hmm. I'm still on my, like, fresh shit, because I'm still in my first year. But we was like, nigga, you tripping. You haven't done nothing? And he was like, yeah, bro, but you know, I've been working. I've been, you know, I've been taking care at home. I've been working. Yeah, because she not working no more, so I've been taking care of home type shit. And it's like, excuses, yeah. You, you on, some, you on bullshit. some bullshit. You still got to take your girl out. I told, I was like, bro, right around the corner, they got the sipping paint right here. It's I right there. I said it cost you $50. 25 for you, 25 for her. Y'all could go right over here to the little grill. I'm so we talking down the harbor. Y'all can go down to the little McCormick and Schmidt and then take it right there, dog. That'll, she'll remember that for the rest of the month. Right, but that time you spend is more important than anything. That's a fact. Like, and like, I love what you said about thought. Like, they want you to think about them, or you, or show you that, yeah, you know, the same way you want your girl to send you a picture, just randomly or some shit. You know what I'm saying? You want to see her. That's the same. Like, like we, I don't know if, if y'all fellas do it, but I don't think that we men normally are the send picture type. I'm at work. Mm -hmm. I think women would actually probably fuck with that heavy. Yeah. <laughs> but I just don't think that's in our nature. I think we work in diff just different ways. And the way we do shit is a little different. Yeah. It's, and I'm not saying you got to say, hey, I booked us a, a roof Chris a reservation. Be ready yeah. by three. Mm -mm. I sometimes will tell my girl, yo, I got this documentary we can watch on Netflix. I got this, dec I got this movie I want to watch. Yeah. And she'll be like, bet. What is it? And then we'll legit on some high school shit. One, two, three, play. She at the crib. I'm at the crib. And we watched it together on some on some high school shit. And I fuck with that. Y'all know it's time. That. It's time though. That yeah. time that I'm thinking about, I'm not gonna hit play on this because I'm thinking about wanting to watch it with you. That's it. But and I've I've been there where you talking to a girl and you're just not doing shit for her besides talking to her. Like you hit her up. You could hit you could tell her good morning every morning. You could talk to her talk to her throughout the whole day. If you don't never spend no time with her, you don't never see her. She's going to end up, like, tripping on you. And you're going to be sitting there confused. Like, damn, like, you know what the fuck? I'm working hard. I make sure I call when I get off. I... I've been there, bro. I've been confused as fuck, too. Like, damn, what the fuck? I've called people ungrateful. You know what I'm saying? You ungrateful. Uh-huh. But I got to look in the mirror and be like, damn, what am I really doing versus what another nigga could do? Right. You don't want to take your girl out. All right, bet. You let Trust her go, me. it's going to be another nigga taking her area away. I experienced that. Yeah. Man, we been, I told Jarrell, on this nine, the reason why you can see growth is because I'll sit in them. I sit through the, the dark times and learn. Because I know I'm not about to be back in this jump. You know how you taking that driving school and you know, all right, but as soon as this class is over, I'm never coming back here. I'm going to know how to drive. Yep. It's the same, that's the same way that I be looking at little shit like. 100. You're going to trip over some hurdles. 100. You're going to go to clear that motherfucker and that ankle going to catch. You're going to scrape that elbow. You got to get up and keep running like that little girl didn't still want the motherfucking still race. Want. Love that. Love that. But uh, some real shit. Real man time shit. Man time. If you're not fucking with it, then you're not on man time. Or you need to really just think about that shit. All, yeah. my, all you niggas that haven't taken your girl out, you just been working, 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 working. G give it some thought. Now let's get to some toxic shit. 
<laughs> um, I asked Terrence this question, and uh, he didn't answer. Well, he did answer, and I don't know if he's going to have the same answer because he was just on some beautiful man time shit. Should you follow your significant other on Instagram and Twitter? There was a conversation people was having about whether you should follow your significant other on social media. I am known for saying that if you don't follow your, your significant other on Instagram and Twitter, or oh, look, if y'all are having a... All right, I'm going to just give y'all the real answer. I think it depends on the relationship that you have with your significant other with social media. Okay. If you got a significant other that is going to be posting on social media often, I think she wants you to see the pics that she posted. Because I know anybody who talks to a girl who does social media, they'll probably tell you, I just posted this pic. I posted these pics today. Girls will be like, did you see the pic that I posted? Yeah. Especially if you don't be liking pics. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you don't follow her, I mean, like, I'm sure your girl would want you to follow. But I also know what it's like to y'all be following each other. And then that could just make your, if you don't like to say, you don't get to spend so much time with your significant other. And you rely on seeing them on social media a little bit. I've been there where, you know, your girl is busy, you're busy. But you get to see what she's doing on social media. You get a kick out of looking at her story, you know? Because mm -hmm. she's not going to send you the shit that she'll put on Instagram. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to ask you because, you know, my girl don't really do socials like that. Yeah. But I know you've dealt with a little bit more of that than me. Nah, 100. That's why I said it depends on the relationship that y'all have. If she's posting like shit on that joint, you posting on your joint, but y'all both are posting, y'all both are posting like the, the thoughts. Like, you posting shit that say, I don't give a fuck what anybody say. I'm going to do me, M-O-E, money over everything. Yeah. <laughs> and then your girl come home, and then you say, oh, yeah, I know I was supposed to link with you, but, you know, I was supposed to, you know, I stopped at 7-Eleven to cash my check, and then I came back. Now, guess what she's thinking about? Money over everything on his Instagram story. Now, look, I just feel like you don't give a fuck about me. I mean, if, if that's what, now you're like, hold up. Yeah. What the fuck you talking about? <laughs> Where is this coming from? And it's all coming from, like, that like that's my thing. You're not good with communication. Some of y'all niggas don't communicate at all, but you got a lot of shit to say on your story though. You got mm -hmm. a lot of thoughts to get off on your Instagram story. Shit you ain't never talked about. So now you got people, even your family, friends. We all, you know, how you have a, that friend that posts shit, but when you yep. link with them, it's nothing. And you know, we talked about how we don't come out with our shit, but yeah, that's on every level where people are. You the happiest, coolest dude when I see you, but then when online, it's like. They'll post the dark shit. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like I'm just by myself in this world. And you got a girl? Do she know that? Nah, for real. How would you read that? But you know? That's true. That's true. So that's why I said with social media, if you the dude, we and Terrell follow this couple on social media, they're going to go unnamed, but me and you both know who we talking about. They are just perfect on social media. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Like, Facebook? I saw the Facebook pics. Oh, so we talking about the one we saw on Facebook? Yes. Oh, but you saw on Facebook, that's on IG. Oh, okay, cool. I, we love that couple because you don't see anything but love from them, even on regular stories. It's not ever any... And they don't even saying? pop out like that. They just, they don't be on that joint every day. They just pop out every once in a couple months and hit you over the head what they love. I fucking love to see that. And it's just like some couples you just love to see. But what I will tell you, I value seeing couples like that, but I also value the Will and Jada's. The Beyonce and Jay Z's, the Rashida and Kirk's. Terrell will tell you, I value and listen close when they talk. Because these are people, any relationship that has flaws, I listen close. If they still together, I always tell Terrell, look at Megan Good and her husband. We ain't seen not one obstacle. What happened? Y'all told us that God brought y'all together. Now y'all not together no more? I'm not speaking on nothing because we, we don't know what happened. Uh -huh. But these couples that, People that say, Kirk and Rashida, Kirk went and had a baby on her. Kirk went and did this. I don't know if he did. Kirk he did. went and did this. Kirk went and did that. And they still together. That don't tell you something about that love might be real, though. Because mm -hmm. it's easy to walk away from somebody. I look at them damaged couples as like, they really got the knowledge of why you would stay with somebody through some real hurt. Yeah. And that's actually going to happen. That's one thing that I think. You going to not, not experience somebody having a baby on you, but like... I just don't respect the relationships that look too perfect, perfect all yeah. the time. Yeah, just to bring. And I, and I didn't mean to step on that. But that's good though, because when we're talking about social media, a lot of times you only see the perfect. 
That, and that's what I meant. Yeah. So, I, I was watching a little bit of Kirk and Rashida's. Uh, oh, you watched it? Breakfast Club a little bit. And it is dope because it's like, damn, y'all been through all of this and been together 20 years. That's why people was asking me about Jada. Like Jada said, they've been together. They've been working, doing, working through shit together for 28, 28 years. years. Loved her response. I could never. I could do. I, all I could do is listen at this point. They've been through shit that, and you need to go and look at that Will Smith interview with, uh, is it David Letterman? David Letterman. Mm-hmm. And you A special un- guest, yeah. You will understand why he went up there on that stage. And smacked the shit out of Chris Rock. We just want to remind y'all. Oh, 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 oh Richard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but. Uh, wow, dude. Hold on, I got a, I got a, <laughs> I got another question for you. Um. <laughs> I can't believe he did that. I still to this day can't believe that. Happened. I know. I can't either. I can't either. Hey, look. At the club, or y'all at the club, uh, your girl at the club, right? Yeah. I feel like you know what I'm going to ask you. Your girl at the club, a nigga's pouring drive the boat shots. No. Can he pour a shot in your girl mouth, drive the boat? Fuck no. Let me see the bottle, bro. I got it. Or oh, nah, she good. Ladies. You about to have your mouth open in front of another man? Shit. <laughs> All right, bet. My thing is this. I get what the party. What if your girl got, like, male friends? Not fucking with you it. You know? Like, and they cool. They respect you, whatever. And they partying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he doing drinks. And he just give your girl a shot. Not fucking with it. You would never see R.I.P. Nipsey and Lauren. You would never see one of his niggas. Or one of her, you never see. It. So you don't think unless Jay, he was gay, you would never you see think another. Jay Stone, you would never. Jay Stone would never step on Nipsey toes. You know that. That would never happen. He it's an RSBX. If he doing this and his fam, and he gives Samantha Sam a shot, he can't give you him wouldn't a shot. See it. You wouldn't see it. And if it's like that, then you know what? It has to be real respect <laughs> yeah. between me and bro. Yeah. If it was my if my boy Don and he doing shots, maybe he was doing shots on the on the on the party bus. Uh-huh. If it's like that, then yeah, some random ass nigga or some nigga that I'm not that cool with, but you know, I'm not with that. And let me tell you, ladies, I mean, fellas, I know some of us might have dealt with this. We don't fuck with your male friend. I don't give a fuck how long you know that nigga. Yeah. Do you see what he doing? No, you can't. I can. Nah, bro. And that's the thing. That is the thing. It's all about how they act. Nah. But you never write until you write. That's my thing. You can't read. Then that, that's a, you see? You still got to be the wall in that situation or the uh-huh. tree. But, bro, I'm not fucking with that. Like Jay-Z and Beyonce. You would never see another man pouring a shine Jay-Z and, and Beyonce mouth. I don't give a fuck if it's her bodyguard. What's the nigga name? Julius. He ain't doing it. Nobody's doing it. If she gay, I get it. I said, I'm, I'm sorry. If he's a gay man, that's her gay best like friend. Like if it's Lil Nas it's, it, Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> But look, people will say, oh, you insecure. Nah, I just don't like the image of that. I just don't fuck with that. I don't care. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a damn. I ask you this. Would you let, put it like this. This is, this is something I'm not insecure about. Would you order a massage for your girl and it's another man that's just in a room with a table like bro did on staircase? Yeah. My See, gr- I'm not, my I'm girl not against loves, that. My girl get massage all the time. She loves that shit. Yeah, I'm not against that. I'm not opposed to that. No. What if the nigga just... Too, a little too smooth. You come back, they, they the massage over. They just talking. Right. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> we talking about the <laughs> massage, right? <laughs> don't play with me. Nah, yeah, it's no words. <laughs> I don't want you talking my girl through a massage. Nah, look, some masseuses are smooth. Shout out to Mo Wavy. He does massages. Shout out. Hey, look, I seen that dude. You see that dude? He have your girl in a your girl. He was straddling the Terrence girl. No. Oh, I've seen that. And her legs was right through here. He was like this on her back. <laughs> Bearded, greased up, shiny ass nigga with no shirt on. Hold up. You said you was getting a regular massage. What is this bullshit? I'm expecting a, some, I'm expecting a smaller man that's just good with his hands. Yeah, what is this? Not this nigga. Ask your, but guess what? I guarantee. It, I don't know. Ladies, would y'all do that? You can get a massage for your, your man, but it's another woman. Nah, yeah, they be cool with it. Let me tell you something how these women play these games. They, they, women are the best. Po- po- I always tell my girl. She the could chicks be a that I fuck with, Terrell, would not. Terrence, the, these girls are the best politicians ever. Because you know what? They know it'll never really happen. So you can <laughs> say, look, what if I get a big titty, fat ass, and a bikini? Uh, get me a massage. And then you know she would say, look, I wouldn't give a I fuck. I don't give a fuck. Because you ain't never going to do yeah. that shit. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when Chris, Bra- Chris Rock. <laughs> 
was like, uh, you want to really, you want to really know how your girl is? He was like, bring home a 24 by 36. If y'all haven't watched Chris Rock old standups, they go. He was like, bring home a 24 by 36 picture of your mother. <laughs> and say, what do you think? I, <laughs> what do you think about this right here? He said, she ain't going to tell you she don't like the picture. She's going to find something else. Look. I don't like that frame. I don't like that frame. He was like, I'm going to buy a new frame. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that. He said, you'll never see that picture again until your mother's dead. And it's like, look what I found. <laughs> <laughs> These women are politicians, bro. I'm telling you. They nah, smooth. Sure. All right. Another question real quick. Uh-huh. If you could be the opposite sex for 30 days, right, mm -hmm. what would you do? And it don't have to be a long answer. If, if, I could be if you could be the opposite sex for 30 days, you get, you're going to have titties. You're going to have a vagina. For 30 days, you are an official woman. You can even look like a woman, whatever. This is the randomest shit ever. It is. What would you do? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to probably... What's the first thing you think you might do? Start an OnlyFans. I'm running up a bag while I can. Because you know that period going to come. <laughs> and you know, I was saying, if I were to be a woman for 30 days, I would want it to be the, the month of the period so I can experience What do you like... mean the month of the period? Because it happens every month. Oh. <laughs> I'm See? getting it either way. I thought I could duck it. <laughs> uh, damn, I got 30 days. All right, bet. Well, I want to experience that. Just so, look, when I, when I switch back, I can say, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> but look, this is the only reason why I bring that up. That is so did you say. <laughs> I want every man listening to this, ask your girl that same question. And look, you go first. Or maybe not. Ask your girl that same question. If you could be a man for 30 days, what would you do? I guarantee 85% of y'all women are going to say, I would be fucking like, I would they fuck, do, they I would do, be they do fucking, say that. They I'd do be say going that. wild. What is that? I don't know what that is. It's like, oh, if I was a man, I want to, you know, I don't know, I would be, the last person I asked said, I would be wild. <laughs> what you going to do? <laughs> I'm not even looking for a relationship. I'm just trying to get out here. I'm like, damn, you didn't say you wanted to go play football. You don't want to fish. You don't want to switch a tire. All of that bullshit y'all hold over us about being a man. Oh, you're not even a real man. You can't fix a tire. But when you become a man, what you want to do? All you want to do is trying to fuck. Uh huh. Man, I don't nah, know. that's actually you know crazy. what I'm saying. That's a crazy Ask your girl. Ask your girl. Hold on, wait. Oh, you so you just want to fuck? That's all you trying to do is fuck? Nah, for real though. You know what I'm saying? But you don't want to fix true. a tire. You don't want to build a house. You don't mm -hmm. want to cut the grass because that's what you think. You was having that conversation. That's how you start an argument right there. Man. <laughs> you pit, women don't have one had that conversation about raising sons. You want, your, you want to, your son to be this ladies, man? You raising your son? Oh, look, if she do this or whatever, whatever, and you raise your son to be the same nigga you don't want. Come on, let's get away from that. All right, yeah, let's get away <laughs> from that. One of our Patreons hit us up on Patreon via the messenger and was like, the situation is this. You live with your girl. Y'all haven't been living together for a long time. So what advice do we have for the person that's living with their girl? Yeah. It's new. They've been together. living for. Let's say they've been living together for like a year. But they've really been together for like five years. But that's their first year living together. And he feel like he don't have no space. Because mm. think about it. Like even me. I see my girl on the weekend. She normally got to work throughout the week. So I might see her on a Wednesday, Thursday night. Rarely. But we normally spend a weekend together. And then we both get back to work during the week unless she get the whole whatever off and then I see her Monday too some like type shit but we have that that time away when you live with your girl you don't have that right so my man was what he was saying was I really want my space and it's not I don't know if it's because an issue with her or or if she would just we should just not live together type shit so he was wondering if he was having a and Basically, that's the, in short, what I'll tell you is he didn't say anything bad about his girl. Yeah. And so, brother, I said that you didn't really say nothing bad about your girl. You more so said, like, I'm spending so you, much time with her that I felt like, damn, I don't really have. You used to having your own fucking space. Own space. And I, 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 I get it. Like, I could not imagine living with somebody like y'all. Y'all have no idea. I haven't crossed that bridge yet. I mean, I've had somebody spend a lot of time with me, but I definitely value the fact that you about to get the fuck out. You about to go the fuck home. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Your girl start pissing you off. You're like, 
I'm only here for a couple more hours and I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going home and playing 2K. I can only imagine if it was like I got to go in another room and then see her mom fucking in, in, the, in the kitchen. I don't want to deal with that, you know? Yeah. So what I would say, man, you got to go out and fucking get that space. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like, yo, I'm going out and you don't have nowhere to go. But like, it's such a tough situation right there. For me... If I was used to staying in the house all the time and now my girl lived there, so now she's always there, I, that would make me less of a homebody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I would be like, yo, I'm about to start going up to the, you know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with a solo thing, you know, like a solo, like it's solo important. moves. Yeah. But I mean, how is your girl really going to respond to that, sir? I mean, you, I feel like you would be a better person it's, to talk about this. And I think it's. It really is going to be a test of, like, if you really rock with your girl or not. Because, like I said, he didn't sound like he said anything wrong with his girl. He yeah. just needs some space. Like, if my girl was to move in with me, I could still get my space. Number one, we work different schedules. So she's, we're not going to just be home together. They both 21. So they could potentially be in school. They could be, you know, Damn, yeah. both studying from home. So they might spend a lot more time than normal couples spend together. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, but even even then, you know I'm a big component. I'm a big um, championer of solo trips and doing solo ventures, or just having that solo time. You have to have time for yourself. But I think it's also important to communicate that. I think that the well, biggest honey. number, the number one and two reasons for divorce is number one. No, well, I'll say I start with number two. Number two is uh, the financial situation. Financial Damn, I thought finance is going to be number one. Finance is number two. Number one. Issue for number one reason for divorce is communication. Man, motherfuckers don't communicate the root cause. I mean, right? Meaning, y'all could have divorced because some shit happened, but it all comes back to y'all not communicating. So, I think now that you feel this way, you have to communicate that to your partner. She lived there too, and it's unfair for your girl to blindside you with some shit, but it's also unfair for you to blindside her with some shit. And she'd be like, Well, I didn't even know you felt that way, type shit. I'm gonna keep it 100, fellas. You can't get something for yourself and not get something for your girl. And in this situation, we're looking at a, a, somebody who wants space. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking for some space. Well, you got to understand, if you're going to take something away from your girl, you got to give her something. And I don't mean something that costs mo cause money. It's just if you're going to take time away, then you got to be given time as well. So, for, for bro, my advice to you, definitely you know me. Take your heart out your body. Put that shit on your sleeve. I'm living on this. This is all I got. You know what I'm saying? Because whether you like it or not, it's who I am. Like, all right, bet. Say she really don't fuck with what I say. It's literally me, though. So you don't want to be 50 with it. That's how I feel. Yeah, you I'm going to tell you exactly how I feel because whether you like it or not, it's me. And I can, I'm, worth, I'm, re I'm ready to be wrong. I'm ready to try to fix it. But I got to let you know exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. I can't say, well, you know what? I meant to also tell you, you know, yep. it's got to always be a hundred. With and, him, yep. Mm -hmm. Real quick, with him, I would say, tell your girl. You know what I'm saying? Hey, look, I feel like we spend a lot of time together, a lot, a lot, and I used to have all of this space. Oh, not space. Hey, I used to, I lived a certain way before I lived with you, and I can admit, living with you is great, but I'm losing like my sense of like how I used to move dolo. I used to yeah. be able to do certain things. And I love spending time with you, but I'm losing that. So that's my that's why I say you take away. You could tell her, like, look, I wanna, you know what I'm saying, make sure I still have my space. So it's almost like allocating your time, you know? Right. When you get off of work, I wanna do this. Or when I get off of work, I'm about to start doing this. Or I would just respect if I get time to do this, but you gotta tell her I'm gonna be there for you on that. Yeah. You can't go up to your girl and be like, I just feel like I don't got enough space. She can give you some real space. Nah, because you know what's crazy too? She might also need space from your ass. Facts. It's just all about, and I like the way you did that because you communicated. Yeah. Where like, you didn't go with smoke. You led with like, I've taken so many L's, y'all, from leading with mm -hmm. smoke. Because we think the, sometimes you think the broad chest. I'm going to tell the ass about that. I'm going to tell them, and that's attractive. Well, man. <laughs> Wrong. Yeah, no bullshit. The biggest advice I can give y'all is go read The Way of the Superior Man. It will change your life when it comes to how you're dealing with yeah. women. 
It's by David Dita. It's called The Way of the Superior Man. Terrence has I'm read telling that. you. If I could put it into words, I would say, if you think about the biggest animals in the jungle, like if you think about a bear, we think about a lion. Lions don't just walk around roaring. They only roar when they have to. A bear, you will never hear a bear roar until it has to. That motherfucker quiet as hell walking through the forest. I understand who I am, though. I understand my size. Yeah. It's the same thing where you, a lot of people go for the, because gorillas are different. Silverback is, I'm letting you know that this is me. Like, I'm the nigga that's supposed to be out. Yeah. Type shit. I'm making it even better than you. Yeah. That is not the answer, though. You know what I'm saying? Look not at the with your girl. And look at the gorilla. Look at that same silverback when he went. Some gorillas are just like us. <laughs> <laughs> look yeah. at how these motherfuckers move. They be like, man, you ain't going. Man, they really they... be like. Nah, for real. Go look at I'm a, telling a, you. a gorilla relationship. Or, or, or a gorilla you. and a woman. They really will. Not a gorilla and a woman. Well, I meant fem- female the, gorilla. Yeah. <laughs> what's the what's the female version of a gorilla? Are they both gorilla? gorilla? I don't know. I think I guess. Like all, the zoo, all the all the uh, the zoo motherfuckers. <laughs> no dumbass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we spent about an hour and a half talking about nothing but giving game. Um, so I hope y'all didn't hate it. Yeah. Ladies, I hope you also took something from it. For what you should expect or some things that y'all ass need to get uh, 100. And again. for the most part, I hope the fellas really pay attention and just understand, like, you're not going to... You, the person you are right now is going to change forever. You know yes. what I'm saying? Yeah. And if you're going to change, it's like looking at the person next to you or these other people, you got to stop looking for your same puzzle piece. You ever notice that each puzzle piece look different? If two identical puzzle pieces was the same, of course they wouldn't go together. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? They would be on opposite ends. They would be on opposite ends. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? You're going to change. That person's going to change. Facts. Dad, one thing Dad said that was, was crazy is he said, being with your mother at age 40 was completely different than age 50, and it's completely different than age 60. Yeah. He said, you just got to Even be, at 30 and 20. Yeah. He said, you just got to be willing to love the different versions of that person. To love that version that you get. That that is some shit that I can't even. I'm not there yet. Mm-mm. When you've been with somebody forty years, you definitely one hundred percent had to be tired. Of I you. watched you be into this, and now you into that. I watched you be this way, and now you mm-hmm. that. You gonna watch your you gonna watch your woman have kids, and that's gonna turn her into a different yeah person. Every pod, every pod, ridiculous. It's almost like y'all looking for it, right? It's the golden hour. It's crazy how I feel like I'm making money. I'm taking golden showers. You know what a golden shower is, right? Now what is that? Just go ahead and say pause. Pause. What's a golden shower? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's like when you get pissed on? Yeah. That's crazy. Oh, a golden shower? Terrence, what do you... How about I step in a golden shower? Nah, do, that so you want, you want a man to pee on you? Why would a golden man shower? I'm going to a golden shower for a woman. They don't do that? <laughs> they say when your voice get higher, you get nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, wait. So a woman can't give you a golden shower? Only time a woman should pee on you is if you get something by jellyfish. What if you haven't, what if you hitting that job? You ever had a girl say, a girl said that she ended up like pissing? You never heard, uh, well, Future said, well, I, technically is technically, Terrence, we're not talking about this. We've been having a good podcast. We're not talking yeah, you're about right, that. Yeah, you're right, you're right. But you <laughs> turned it into that. I was trying to say I was a rich, you said rich you taking was, rich showers. Nah, golden shower is, go ahead and Google search golden shower. Ebony. <laughs> See what you get. <laughs> Golden showers, ebony. <laughs> you add on one Google. Word, add one, one word. You can add one word to some shit that'll change the whole result. The whole search. Search. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> search backseat. Um. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> Just add ebony to right. it or busty. Right. Backseat freestyle ebony. Yeah. <laughs> this ain't Kendrick. <laughs> 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 you a funny ass nigga! <laughs> Damn, you a funny, funny ass nigga! Hey, you know what? I was gonna tell an embarrassing story that happened to me. You know, I was not gonna tell it, but I told it last night and I said, Damn, I ought to say this on the podcast. What wow. embarrassing? I was gonna say this. Some songs get stuck in your head and you don't even know it. You know? Uh huh. It's like some songs are like actually good. And it's like, they're not for you. Yeah. <laughs> but they get stuck in your head. Prime example. Uh, what's a woman song that they get stuck in your head, Terrell? It's motherfucking Doja Cat Woman. Let me be your woman. 
Uh-huh. I'll be singing that joint. I'm like, okay. Or when See? Beyonce had Beyonce all on his mouth. Right. Like, like Terrell the, was walking I through the, the crib saying Beyonce all on his mouth. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, whose true. mouth you on, Terrell? <laughs> but look, you don't realize what you're saying. You don't realize what you're saying. And let me tell you, this is what I realized. I went to the gym, right? And I thought that I left my AirPods at home, you know? Mm-hmm. And I had a specific song by Lotto stuck in my head all morning. What, was it? It's giving balls, It's giving bitch. balls, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and look, it's giving bad, <laughs> bitch. I'm in my... <laughs> you don't know that it's... <laughs> this is embarrassing, but whatever. You don't know that it's a song stuck in your head until you get excited. <laughs> So I'm like, damn, I forgot my AirPods. I'm not singing that song at all. You at the gym? I'm at the gym, about to go, and I got my windows rolled down. Because, you know, I do my pre-workout in the car. Uh-huh. I'm sitting there in the car. I'm doing my pre-workout, and I'm like, I had just realized I left my, Air- my AirPods. So I said, damn, I got to go all the way back home or go in with no AirPods. And I said, you know what? Let me just check my bag real quick. <laughs> I double-checked the bag, and I feel the AirPod not, and I'm like, it's giving balls, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and look, when I said that, soon as I look out my window, it's this nigga getting in his car. And I'm like, oh, shit. I'm trying to switch and put on the 42 Doug. I'm turning the 42 Doug Maybach up. And I'm like, I hope this nigga didn't just see me say that. I see this nigga to this day in the gym. And I'm always like, I hope the nigga didn't hit me. Oh, you know? God. Because <laughs> I'm like, this nigga see me in my car say, it's giving balls, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he not who y'all think he is. <laughs> this said, nigga walking around thinking he's tough. <laughs> he think he tough, but he giving balls, bitch, in his whip. You ever been listening to some shit in your car and you pull up and you blast the music and you don't realize that as soon as you turn that corner, that next song start? The next song start, yeah. And it's, you know what I'm saying? It's the Saweetie joint. Nah, that yeah. my best friend. And now you pulling up to that. You pulling up to that joint like the radio. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Try to turn it down. <laughs> Funny shit. Oh, ever. That shit was so embarrassing. And to this day, I seen that nigga and I be like this, look. Because <laughs> I ain't on that Hell, I'm not on that ball, know. bitch. I'm trying to sing loud songs. I'm stringing streets just watching. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bet. I did want to get to some shit that happened in the mainstream. I want to send an RIP to uh, Ray Liotta. Yes, sir. Um, legend. Who passed away just before the last podcast. Legend. We all know him for his role in Goodfellas, mm-hmm. um, Angels in the Outfield, and, and others. It's just, you know, a sad thing to lose him. Yeah, man. And, I uh, think we was just watching the... Uh, it's crazy because we was watching the... Uh, Do you remember the time? We... Oh, no, that wasn't Ray Liotta. That was his brother. No, Terrence. That was Michael Madsen. You tripping. <laughs> but I uh, wanted to make sure we said that, and then we'll get to the football desk tripping. once we do uh, sports. But um, definitely R.I.P. Ray Liotta. Mad Men was one of my favorite yep. Scorsese movies in the beginning. Oh, yeah. So that movie has such a profound effect on us in, high, in film school. Right? Ray Liotta is a face that no, like I've looked at on my screen forever. So. I was going to ask you, uh, Stranger Things came back. I mm-hmm. do not watch, but you do. What do you think? I know you're not done. I'm on episode six right now. I'm actually on episode five still because I got to go back. But this shit is so good right now to me. I'm going to keep it a Honda. I was telling Terrell. I like Stranger Things a little bit more when my man Will was stuck in the, under, um, stuck in the uh, upside down. And we was trying to figure out how to communicate with him and get on that. And, and like with the Demogorgon or the Demogod or whatever that shit was called. Demogorgon. That shit was like prime... Stranger Things. But I try not to be that person that's stuck on them being kids. I appreciate that they older. You can tell that everybody's older. Are they in, like, high school now? Or? They in high school now. So the only thing that I thought in the beginning, the first four episodes, was that I thought 11 was kind of annoying, y'all. I'm going to keep it 100. I, I get it that that's not 11. It's Jane. And she's trying to be a high schooler. But I'm like, all right. Are we just going to have to watch people just shit on her for three episodes? She just feel like shit for three episodes. And my thing is, I was saying this. I think it's a little unrealistic. You go up on front of the classroom, you talking about your father. And somebody says, your father's what? Oh, I thought this was, you know what I'm saying? It's like, damn, they really like blatantly shitting on her. And I'm like, okay, so I guess they want us to just feel real shitty for 11 this whole time. But I'm like, yo, 
she a fucking superhero. She should be way more confident for where she came from. Don't give yeah. a fuck about what these motherfuckers think. It's like, why she got to take the bully? Oh, I'm being bullied in high school. Oh, she don't fuck around, though. She don't fuck around. And I know they th- they're the ones who, been, who told me watch. And I'm still watching. I'm still liking. I'm loving the show. Y'all. I'm loving the show. Love it. Even 11. I just was like, man, I wish she wasn't getting such bullied. But to me, so far, I just think it's fun, man. Like, they introduce all of these characters that are still around. And I don't know if you know that Stranger Things had that 90s vibe. The Duff, I think they're called the Duffel Brothers or the Duff Brothers. Duffer or Duffel? Me, keep, keep going. I'll, I'll, I'll make it. I'll. Those brothers, I like what they doing. You know what I'm saying? They keep me feeling like I'm watching like some vintage 90s. Oh, or 80s, or not even 90s, it was 80s. Duffer Brothers. The yeah, Duffer yeah. Brothers. I feel like what they're doing with it is dope, and I'm excited to see how it ends. You know what I'm saying? So I'm definitely liking on Stranger Things, too. By next week, I'm going to be done that jump. Stranger Things. Four. All right, bet, bet, bet. Shout out to everybody that's watching Stranger, Stranger Things. Netflix. We yeah, they out. going through it, but they got a couple gems, and this is one of them. Look, Ozark is finished. Ozark is Stranger done. Things, this the last season? Who knows? Who Maybe knows? not. But they, they Netflix. put y'all, Netflix putting all their money in the too hot to handle and all these bullshit shows. And that's why they're raising the fucking subscription price. But we paying for the circle, the this, the that. All right, all this bullshit. That new bullshit show they have called Bullshit. It's called Bullshit. Mm. Where look, this is We're bullshit. gonna put something on here and you're gonna say what it is. And these contestants are gonna say whether it's bullshit or not. Okay, yeah, we watched like, one episode of that bullshit and said, all right, bet, fuck this. This is bullshit. Man, we are literally a couple of months, two months from the new Game of Thrones. What in the hell? Oh, I'm sorry for this. Terrific. Diversity. But I was going to tell <laughs> you, oh, damn, I wanted to come here. Netflix has given, given you some dope stuff. Like, we got the Heart of They Fall on Netflix. We got a lot of shit on Netflix that people watch, bro. Nah, for sure. And people be sleeping on Netflix. Like, Netflix isn't going anywhere. I keep telling you, they had the most subscriptions. They're still the biggest. That's yeah, like Netflix saying, look, still- Walmart falling off. Yeah, all right, but guess what? It's yeah. always going to be Walmart. Oh, they were saying the same thing about Apple. Apple falling off because you might see that new Samsung, whatever. All right, bet. Well, we're not shaking at that. Now, nah, Apple will never fall off. And my thing is this. If we, the, if we the innovators, we next. Y'all only doing this because of us. Right, you wouldn't be here. Y'all wouldn't even be doing this. So look, okay, yeah, take my recipe. Cool. You are going to affect my bag a little right. bit. But I'm going to double it up. Facts. Netflix is going to soon be like Warner Brothers. Soon be like, if they're not already, you know what I'm saying? Where it's like, yo, for real, for real, you can watch some shit, but low key, we putting originals out. No, nah, for real. At a certain point, it's going to be nothing but films coming out on Netflix. Right. Before we get to sports. the sports, motherfucking Lucky Day. He might have the best album of the year. Was that the drink you was listening to? Blue Moon? Yeah. I didn't want to get caught you. No, that's Day. Oh. Uh, Lucky Day is the last one I played. You know, okay. everybody knows Over. But that album? I got to go and listen to that, John. That but you know, I'm not Candy really... Drip or whatever. First, I said, I'm going to put this greased up, honey-covered nigga in my phone. But then I said, you know what? Nigga greased up like a honeycomb on a album cover? You didn't see his album cover? This is exactly why I don't fuck with that nigga Lucky Day. First of all, hold on, wait. The nigga. <laughs> you bring Ella May on stage and look at you on your album. That's why I don't trust you. Ella. That album. <laughs> hey, look. Boston Celtics, Golden State Warriors in the NBA Finals. The first game is the night. I'm going to be editing the podcast and getting that up for y'all while I watch. But just know, I know what I said last week. I said I wanted to see my man Steph Curry get that ring. But then my man Tatum went and did what I – my man Tatum went on that floor game seven with the 24 on his wrist. And I said – on his 24 armband. And I said, mm, that's why I love him. <laughs> and he went out there and put on a Kobe-esque performance game seven. Then after – I don't know if you ever seen the uh, – I don't know why. They showed – I mean, his speech when he was talking about Kobe being his favorite player and his – my idol – he texted Kobe before the game and said, I'm going to go out there and do this for you. I don't know if you've seen that. Yeah, 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 yeah. The hate that I saw the Celtics getting, not really hate, but like everybody saying, Warriors easy, Warriors easy. I'm sticking with my pick that I picked before the playoffs even started. I said my pick in the East was who? The Boston Celtics. Now, me and Trav talked about it. They went out there and beat Milwaukee and Giannis. 
Fuck the injuries. They went out there and beat KD and Kyrie Irving. Yep. And the Nets swept their ass first round. Went out there and beat them beasts in Miami, the Heat, the number one seed. And now, if they go out here and beat the Warriors, we can talk about this being one of the better finals runs of the last 10 years. Nah, for sure. You feel me? For sure. And that's, you know what I'm saying? This, to me, I want, now I want to see my man Jay Tatum get that ring. And I fuck with yeah. Jalen Brown. I fuck with Marcus Smart. Al Horford, first finals in 16 years. Terrell, you got it. Uh, I'm with, I mean, whoever Terrence roots for, I normally root for. Except Washington. I root for Washington. I watched every Washington game last year, basically. Every one for the last two years. But he years. just posts Papa Russ on his page. Just be a commander fan. All, we got a new team. First of all, I've been a Broncos fan 24 years. That'll never change. Kobe year for that. Some of y'all niggas haven't even reached Kobe year in life. I'm Kobe year as a, as a fan. Me but, too. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm a fan for one year commanders. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, 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 I do want to see the, uh, the Boston Celtics carry out the upset. After I seen how they crossed out all those teams on the revenge tour. Yeah. I said, yo, I would like to see them win. I'm tired of Steph and them winning. I'm tired of watching them celebrate. It's like, you know what, Steph, you the greatest, but I'm tired of y'all winning. It was like when the Spurs kept winning. How many times can we see Tim Duncan doing that? All right. Somebody else need to win. Yeah, but like, I would like to see Steph get his finals MVP because I feel like he could get it. Nah, 100. So 100. I'm kind of I'm torn. That's I, what I, I do want to sell this upset, though. I'm just like torn in the middle, too. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I'm, I'm more low. I'm more so leaning towards Boston, but I wouldn't be mad to see Warriors win. And I'm a Braun fan. So people saying, look, if, if Curry gets his ring, he's in a conversation with Braun. All right, bet. I think Curry already in that him. conversation with Braun. I think he is. Curry changed the game. Man, did you see what that dude was saying about him? Uh, what was it? Uh, Steve Ed? Was it um, Walker? I don't know shit about basketball like, like these other niggas do. You know what I'm saying? Antoine Walker? But they, he was saying, Steph Curry doesn't make anybody else better. What do you think about that? I don't watch enough basketball to say. People were saying, well, he, when, when Steph plays, people get more looks or whatever. But he was like, Steph doesn't make anybody else better. They were like, he's the king of bad shots. He just makes bad shots. He was hating. But some of it was like, oh, okay. Because the reason why he was saying that is because people put him in the lane with Brown. I think, but I then, mean. But then some people will say Brown don't make people better. And I don't think Steph Curry has shown that he's like, I like what Stephen A said. Stephen A was talking about how, and this was a controversial take. He said that he thinks Steph Curry changed the game for the better as to where Jordan changed the game, arguably, for the worse. Because he said when Jordan was out there, Jordan was all about the individual player. And that it was inspiring other people to be this individual dog, like this individual If they score. got me, yes. if they got me, we good. Even though he had Pippen and other things. They, Stephen A was talking about how the NBA, is it Boyster? Boyster? You know how they say rise up? Like Okay, yeah, that's a good word. The NBA put Jordan on the map, not the team. He was talking about how Magic and Magic was never like, Boys like looked at as that individual. Same way with Bird. It was like both of them had teams. Ch uh, Steph Curry, like Magic and Bird, had a good team with him. You got Clay, you got Draymond. That was a dope, deep ass team, you know what I'm saying? I think in 2016. But I think me, I think Steph Curry's ability just being so great, that alone not only changes the game, but it's just about being at this high level at this skill but still being a team player. If if KD, I don't think KD would have won them rings without a Steph Curry. I think it's ridiculous. K, look at KD now. Is Kyrie making KD better? Oh, they're going to say that well, they're going to say it's a difference. But Kyrie is a better scorer. But we haven't had to see them play a whole man. Kyrie is a better scorer with the rock dribbling than Steph you know what I'm saying? Steph is the most immaculate shooter. And I think just being very, having that very, like, elite skill, I think that does make other people better. Clay wouldn't get the looks. Yeah. 
Jordan Poole get to go out there and have this dude who, look, if I get the ball, I'm going to make it. I might not ball hog. He might ball hog. But if I get it, I'm automatic. That makes my team better. He would definitely have that badge on 2K where all your team attributes go up when you're on the floor. <laughs> I get what somebody would say, though, when they say they feel like, well, he's just a maker of bad shots. People shit on Steph's defense. Yeah. That I don't man know. about to have four rings. Maybe. Who knows? Yeah. My man Jay Tatum. If you keep wearing that Kobe band, I'm not rooting for Steph. And then, um, while we talking about, well, since you swung at a 2K, I'll swing at a Madden. They uh, said that John Madden's going to be on the cover. I think they were supposed to announce today who the real Madden cover was supposed cover to be. Athlete. Cover. Who knows? Madden going to be on the, the all Madden edition. But we don't know who the player is. I don't know if they're going to do a player edition. That's what's crazy. I think it should be Joe Burrow, number nine. He had an amazing season last year. Uh, or, or, you know what I'm saying? It could be Joe Burrow. I think you put maybe Cooper Cup up there. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't mind seeing Cooper Cup on the cover. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, put the guys that made the impact of last year on the cover. Like, y'all put Tom Brady... And Pat Mahomes on the cover of the latest Madden. I think, right? Tom yeah. Brady and Pat Mahomes was on this last cover. Like, come on, man. Let's go with somebody different. Let's put Aaron Donald on there. Let's put nah, yeah. the elites of the... That's what they were saying. Why is... Okay. I'm not even going to get into that on the podcast. Why is Pat Mahomes 99? Why is Pat Mahomes a 99? Terrell, That's be... ridiculous, bro. I'm sorry. It's ridiculous. Pat Mahomes is not a 99, and it's ridiculous. I would give Pat Mahomes a 99. But I like the fact that they put John Madden on the cover. I just was going to say, they need to make a better game. Take the year and do a better fucking game. That's what I'm saying. Change the way the every... Shit. Do you remember when they used to change shit? Remember we used to have QB Vision? They did that, but then they changed it. Remember, you remember Peyton Manning's QB Vision? Yes. Versus like an old, like, like a Redskins Mark Brunel? Bro, that shit was so dope. It was terrible, though. But it was more realistic. But... I feel like, damn, y'all need to make a better game. That game is the same every year, New Jersey's and, and, and whatever. I'm and excited to see what our shit look like. Dude hit me and said, you know what? They don't have to make a better game because they don't have competition. And I said, 2K has zero competition. But they at least try. 2K used to have NBA, NBA Live, but look, 2K stopped giving a fuck. Right. So I'm definitely hoping that, well, you know what? I've lost hope. We look at Madden now. Just look, get they, the new. They got Wentz as a 71. Or oh, 70. Like, he's like the second lowest rated quarterback on the game. And they Af got after, Aaron, yeah. after, what's it do? Sam Darnold. And they got the, the, the third round draft picks. Malik Willis and them, they 73s. That's what I don't <laughs> get, man. Like, so Carson Wentz is a 70? They just don't respect Redskins. Look, I mean, Commanders. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to talk about my man, Javante Tank Davis, man. I'm so glad that he went out there and knocked this motherfucker out, man. Terrell, I tell you, we got vlog footage of it. I'm so glad. Well, you know, I was recording when I was watching. Oh, shit, you did? Yeah. Oh, damn. When we was on the phone and everything. I, cause I had to call Terrell because y'all know I did my thing, watched it. I couldn't believe that this dude was calling Javante out the way he was. But, like, I'm sorry. Well, Terrence, I'm going to turn it down. I'm sorry. Whoever is talking like this. I just cannot. I can't. Oh, you got the you got the audio. Eight twenty-eight. Tank flatline on the ground. So show up at Barkey Center May twenty-eighth and buy the pay-per-view. I don't give a fuck what type of condition y'all say he has or whatever. The arrogance and you talking like this. Yeah, he kind of went out there and got your shit slapped. Nah, Come yeah, on, bro. You, but you know what they said? They said, look. They said, damn. But Roley sold the fight, though. <laughs> nah, he did. He, he did. He sold that joint because I watched. I don't even give a fuck. <laughs> Somebody said Roley need to be in WWE. Man, <laughs> I ain't going to lie. Look, let's, let's have Tank, a conversation. Tank, you won. But you was not winning rounds. We was a little shook. This nigga Roley got the delts popping. This nigga got nothing but shoulder and nothing but back, back in... And then look, when he was 
I was like, yo, if he land one of them joints, remember he landed that one on, on Javante and Javante uh -huh. went low? I was like, is this a Mike Donna Broner situation? Man, I be thinking that, I just, my, my thought, I think Javante Davis, and people call me a hater, whatever, I think he isn't as good a boxer as he is strong. He survives because of these punches that he lands. But he be getting his ass whooped and then knock the person out. Which is why if he fought Lomachenko or somebody else and not a nigga that got 14 fights, then I'm going to be tuned in like, all right, This is the number shoot. one lightweight guy. Man, I'm not going to lie. I told my girl, I said, damn, I hope Javante lose so I can call Terrence. <laughs> and she watched with me. She said, fuck it. We watched, we watched the joint together. And as soon as, soon as Roley went down, my phone ringing, it's Terrence screaming. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to say two things. Terrell was the same way with the bronze bomber. Deontay Wilder, he would call me and be like, Deontay Wilder about to lose. And then he met Tyson Fury. I was you know right. What I'm saying? Terrence you was wasn't watching right. Him. It's just knockout Stavern and all these people. <laughs> and I said, Terrence, if he fights somebody that can actually fight, it's over with. And Terrence was so mad when he knocked Tyson Fury down with Tyson And got then up. this man came back from the dead. He should have been like this. Look, <laughs> there's no way we letting you get up and How fight. How you feel about people saying that they stopped the Roley fight early? A lot of people wanted them to let Roley get out there. Roley couldn't get his feet on his ground. He looked like he was on some Rolies. <laughs> Bro, I was going to say this about Roley. If he would have shut the fuck up during the press conference, if he would have just been like, I'm going to go out there and do my best and just try to fight and win, if he was one of those fighters and went out there like that, oh, yeah. it would have been a different story. Oh, yeah. I think the fact that he was saying, I'm going to knock him out, I'm going to knock him out, Tank was able to see... Tank even said it. He one of them dudes that got some success, but we can tell he not really about it. Yeah. They leaned heavy on Roley's mm -hmm. mouth. No, no homo shit. They, they leaned heavy on the fact, oh, he a talker? We're going to shut that Back. talk up. Because guess what? We don't talk. We do what we do. We See, do we what we talk. do. We just do. <laughs> and look, this is the funny thing. With Roley, think about Maidana. Maidana didn't know English that well. So he was just like, I'm going to go out there and fight my best. Broner was out there rapping like shit. I'm gonna knock him the fuck out. I'm, I'm the the can man. Maybe he calls up the can man, American, Mexican. All right, bet you met your motherfucking match you today. You met the match because guess what? I like the fact that he was real quiet, didn't say shit. Like, all right, bet I'm not gonna say nothing. We just gonna handle that shit in the ring. If Roley would have did that, I think it would have been a different fight. Cause Roley looked intimidating to me as a Javante fan. Do you remember when Pacquiao? Or remember when that Maidana fight happened with Floyd and you were like, okay, Floyd. We saw what happened. Be Floyd. Yeah. You know? <laughs> we Not saw what out. happened to Brona, your, your junior. Yeah, like, or oh, when he got in there with Pacquiao, it was like, all right, Floyd. Oh, my God. This is Pacquiao. We were scared as shit. Floyd was 40-something and all. that I talked about Floyd versus Pacquiao. And all them motherfuckers. Yup. There was Pacquiao fans. I never get my boy Ivan. We was both where he was working Samsung, and I was just the the a home theater. We was both at home theater selling TVs, and he was like, "Dude, if Pacquiao lands, if he if he, oh my god, it was the most stressful night of my life." Funny. Where shit. did I go? I felt like I watched that somewhere, like a party. We went to a party. I remember my boy. We was with my boy Sean. I remember that. Remember Sean came here with that Asian joint. Oh yeah. I never forget that night. But yeah, uh, also in sports, I wanted to give uh, a rest in peace to Jeff Gladney, former Viking uh, and Cardinal, died in a car crash in Texas. Yeah, that was crazy, man. 25 and, uh, years old, way too young. Just got a new contract. Yeah, just found out his girlfriend passed away with, with him in that car. That's crazy, man. That's so, the second time. Yeah, fellas, y'all getting these fast cars, got to be careful. And then also a random, random, random happening. But uh, RIP Marion, Marion Barber. Mary Cow Navarre Cowboys Barry. running back, tormented the Redskins for a couple years while he was there. Let's say Washington fans, we know exactly who Marion the Barbarian is. Hey, look, if you don't know who Marion Barber is, one of his best highlights ever, I don't know if it was us, but I think it was. Oh, when he was in the we end zone? We had him at the 109-yard the line. Like, this man was in the back, was breaking tackle, broke tackle, broke tackle, end up gaining like seven yards. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of his best plays, man. RIP that man. His cause of death is unknown, you know. The last time I checked, it's probably out now, but it's just crazy, man. When I was on Twitter, motherfuckers are assholes because I was like, the shit feel like it never stops. And people was like, yeah, it's almost like people die every day. It's like, yeah, motherfuckers, but like, 
I'm talking about the fact that we just deal with death so often in terms of like yeah, so it's how Mar- we're seeing this. Like this dude, with the, the dude you just said was 25. Marion the Barbarian was like 30, 30 something. Yeah. So that's supposed to just be normal. And you know what I realized about the timeline? People just be trying to get their asshole take off so they can get like a cool retweet. Yeah, like a, a, something trying to be funny. You're not funny and you don't even have a picture. If you don't have a picture of yourself up there, get a fucking picture of yourself before you start talking shit about people. Right. How about that? Let's see that's what the fuck you really look is. like. That's the most coward shit ever. To see people talking about how people look. If you on there, you just giving your music take or whatever. Yeah, even a harsh sports take, you don't fucking know sports. Whatever. Whatever. Cool. But it was these people that was killing this uh, dude for his outfit. Hella motherfuckers with them. They don't even have their picture up. Y'all right. some cowards. You got nothing but gifts and shit in your media. We can't even find you. We don't even know what you look like. Coward. Um, big shout out to my man LeBron James. Yes, the greatest sir. of all time. Goat James. Yes, sir. Uh, big shout out to LeBron James, who just um, was announced by Forbes that his estate, his net worth is valued at a million dollars, over a billion dollars, which is something that no athlete has done. And the time that LeBron James has done, the only other person to do it was Michael Jordan. And Michael Jordan did it when he was already retired for 10 years, or I think 14 years, something like that. LeBron is the only active player to become a billionaire. And it's more, a lot of it is due to, of course, LeBron has a, the, his shoe contract, right? Yeah. His investments with companies like, that Probably Gatorade he might have a still deal hella, with. He Nike. got hella deals with a bunch of people. Um, but mo- what took him over a billion was the uh, the joint Spring, that he had, Spring Hill Spring Hill TV that he has with Mavic Carter, um, the same people that valued I'm, I'm sorry the uh, damn I forget who it was but they valued that that business at 725 million dollars okay. after Space Jam came out and was successful because the studio in order for a studio to get value like that it has to show success so Space Jam was done by that studio was successful. The Muhammad Ali documentary was done by that studio, put out on HBO, was successful. And so that takes their value up. So now Spring Hill is worth $725. LeBron has the biggest stake in uh, that. Ah, yeah. So that takes LeBron's net worth over, over a billion, bill. Over a billion dollars, man. It's a beautiful thing. Love LeBron. The reason why I love LeBron, outside of him being a great ass basketball player, I'm a LeBron fan because he's a stand up dude, he's unapologetically black. Um, he has a beautiful family. He never had no scandals where he had Savannah out here looking crazy. He's a great dad. He's a great man for the school. He cares about black folks, unlike Jordan. So, <laughs> and honestly, I'm happy to see Braun make a billion dollars while still being on the court, man. We watching the torch get passed from Jordan, Facts. from Jordan's accomplishments to Braun. Not trying to shit on Jordan because I get what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, I'm just throwing but, a little smoke. And it smoke, smoke well deserved, you know what I'm saying, for the LeBron fans. I think this is amazing. To see somebody running around worth a billion dollars on that court, be easy by Bron. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let's be easy by Bron. Like, I really respect Bron for what he's done for the game. We all grew up watching him, so. And yeah. let me tell y'all something yeah. about Bron. Go and look at LeBron James' greatest highlights of all time. And you will literally truly see why he was so dominant. And I'll tell you this. Look at LeBron James' greatest highlights as a, as, uh, as a Miami Heat player. That nigga was a fucking beast. Look, yeah. I randomly had LeBron. Do you know how you're watching something on YouTube and it goes to another video? I randomly had the LeBron highlights come on. And I said, man, this man was a fucking problem. Yeah. That's crazy. And I, what, what I think is dope is LeBron looks up to Jay. Jay Jay-Z's 52. Jay-Z was born in 1969. That's crazy. That's why when Jay-Z says, um, used to shop at TJ Maxx back in 83. I don't even know if it was open then. I ain't know Oprah then. But in, two, in 1983, um, Jay-Z was already what? 17? 83. So hold on. He was born in 69. So he was 14 years old already. But for Braun to look up to Jay, and Braun was born in 84. Oh, okay. So Braun, 37. For him to reach a billion, a billion dollars. I know that he's, like, proud that he could be in that same space with Jay. With somebody like Jay. And I did it my own way. And, we, and look, I love Beyonce to death. But, look, you see how Beyonce looked at Braun on that court. Come Jay, on, man. you better be careful because now Braun got a Billy, too. <laughs> now Braun got a Billy. But we're going to reach your Billy first. I told my wife this spiritual shit really worked. Shout out to Braun, man. And we had a two-hour mark. 
So turn up, man. What a dope podcast. I mean, this is probably going to be like one, one fifty something. One fifty something, yeah. Just because we're going to have a pod intro. But like, dope, it's definitely going to be dope to see the, the two hour podcast. But man, man, we talked about some real shit on this joint. Talked about some real shit. Talked about some chivalry. Talked about some real man time shit. Real man time shit. And lastly, on Braun. Oh, no, I got nothing else with Braun. We good. <laughs> I said it. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, man, hopefully y'all got some gems from this joint. And, um, we right back next week. What you mean? Yes, sir. Make sure y'all stay safe, man. The monkey pox is spreading. Just wash your hand. Don't sit your bare ass on the toilet seat. And use sunscreen. It's hot as fuck. We need that. Yeah. <laughs>